This week, we start building a custom crossband repeater for use at the McCreary Gravel Rally and other public events. That's what's coming up next on El Cara Ham Radio. Hello, folks. This is Chris, KY4CKP. So, how do you go about building a custom repeater? How do you go about uh, certain kinds of projects that you may want to do either personally or as we tend to do as a club? Well, we started out by getting a few of us together on uh, what we call an impromptu workday, and we started discussing our goals. What did we want to do? Uh, in this case, it was build a custom crossband mobile repeater. Uh, setup that we could use for various public events and you just start to list out all the components you'll need and what the approximate costs are going to be. Now one of the components we decided to at least begin using as a foundation for part of this project is a case that I happen to have on hand uh, from a previous project that I wasn't currently using and that is the Apache 5800 uh, roller case. Uh, this is a, I would call it sort of a medium size case. It's of course a hard case, relatively uh, water resistant, that kind of thing. Uh, pretty decent quality, you know, not as as good overall as some of the name brands that are out there, uh, Seahorse and Pelican and others, but uh, typically well under half the cost of many other brands. And so since we had this on hand, we decided to to use it for the initial foundation of this project. Well, after that, we wanted to start doing some measurements. You know, there's the, uh, the bump outs for the wheels on the roller case. There's just things we have to consider if we're going to be putting equipment into any sort of a hard case. So uh, I took the hard case down to, to Worldwide Headquarters. Again, had several of our members show up this day. And we just started uh, checking out the case and, uh, you know, pulled out all the foam and just started uh, measuring and putting some of the components we knew were going to be part of the project in there. And, you know, how do they fit? Can we fit them in one uh, orientation or another? And with the uh, radios we're going to use, and we're going to talk about these here in a, in a few minutes, uh, you know, there's only so many uh, angles that they would fit with this particular case at least. Uh, and, again, we know that there's lots and lots of cases on the market. Uh, this was one that uh, was basically handy and is readily available and is not uh, really super expensive. So we were going to at least sort of uh, begin uh, doing some design discussions with it. Uh, and so again, we were just getting out uh, the radios. These are ICOMs, uh, the uh, F-121 and F-221 UHF, VHF radios. Uh, and we uh, happen to have, uh, our club happens to have several of these on hand. Um, now, our goal with this project, of course, right now we're doing the initial sort of design for a uh, transportable uh, mobile crossband repeater. But our goal ultimately it would be to have seven, maybe even eight of these, uh, just kind of depending on how things might work out. And uh, the next gravel rally is in spring of uh, 2024, so we've got uh, less than a year. Uh, and that seems like a really long time. And, of course, in some ways it is a long time. But, uh, you know, it's going to take time to acquire all the components we need. It's going to take time and budget to, uh, to buy everything that we need. And, you know, um, uh, unfortunately, sad to say, our club does not have uh, all the money uh, to do all of this sitting in the bank right now today. We have a little money in the bank, and, of course, we can uh, do fundraising, and we have dues that come in and various things. Uh, but it's going to take some, uh, some work on the money side of things uh, to do everything that we would like to do. But it starts with building the first one and uh, nailing down what uh, the costs uh, really look like they're going to be and then uh, taking it from there and uh, making sure that there aren't any other directions that we may want to go with the, uh, the, uh, the needs of, of helping to provide communications for that uh, particular gravel rally and potentially other types of activities in this area. In, in Kentucky, like many other states, lots of rural areas and lots of areas where there is no cell phone coverage. And so for a lot of these outdoor activities, uh, there's a, um, a foot race, the No Business 100, that takes place in, in parts of Tennessee and Kentucky. 
uh, in many of these areas, there's no cell phone service, or it's very, very in and out and spotty. Uh, and so amateur radio is, is very helpful and used many cases to help provide communications and emergency communications in case there's, there's problems or injuries or anything that may occur. Uh, so uh, it's uh, uh, a necessary part of these activities. You can't have these activities without uh, you know, a proper form of communication. So, again, we got together, we started discussing uh, the various components, the case, the radios, fans, power supplies, batteries. Uh, there's all kinds of things that are going to have to go into this. We want it to be as much of a self-contained unit as it can be. Uh, and, uh, again, ultimately, we're looking at uh, hopefully being able to build several of these, potentially as many as seven or even eight of these. Uh, we'll just have to kind of see how maybe the first one or two turn out and, uh, you know, what the, the overall needs, you know, for the club and, and for uh, our activities truly are. Uh, because, again, it's going to take some money to, uh, to put each one of these together. Uh, so, again, we start out, we start taking notes, we start um, nailing down what are the components we're going to need to get and what, is, what do they cost and uh, what the, what's their availability. And uh, we may have missed a few things, but I think we we definitely got uh, uh, the, the main primary parts. We know there's going to be some hardware and some some smaller things that uh, you know that usually isn't that expensive. But we may have to uh, uh, you know order some some nuts and bolts and, and just some things like that, some connectors and, and that kind of thing. We're going to be using some Anderson power poles for all power connections and that kind of stuff. So you just have to start by talking it over as a club, if that's what you're doing, which we are, and again, taking some notes, and then you just start doing rough measurements well, and, like and, uh, and discussing ideas on how to just lift it out uh, help yeah. provide yeah. cooling. You know, for our, our situation yeah, within the case, uh, we have to be concerned about weather uh, because uh, the gravel rally in particular, I believe the No Business 100 uh, foot race, uh, these are going to happen rain or shine for the most part, and a lot of activities do. Uh, and so we have to be prepared. We've been really lucky the last two years. We, we didn't have to worry about weather for the gravel rally. Now, another major component for this, uh, this project, this, this mobile you know, custom crossband repeater uh, design, uh, we're going to be using some ICON, uh, F121, F221. I believe there's also an S model in there uh, that you can sometimes find used on eBay. You can buy, I guess, brand new maybe, but we, we typically are trying to find these used on eBay. A lot of times whenever um, emergency services in various cities and counties uh, upgrade their equipment to newer, maybe fully digital uh, encrypted units, uh, sometimes you'll see batches of these radios come up for sale for, for a pretty decent price. And, uh, and we try to, uh, to typically snag some of these. So, uh, in fact, I think we just purchased another batch of three uh, of the, I think they were the VHF uh, versions. So we've got several UHF. We, we now have um, uh, several... Uh, VHF. Um, and again, it's going to depend on how many of these we end up deciding to build overall. Um, but again, that's that takes money. And uh, then the other part of it is, uh, if you're especially, you know, when you're buying used equipment, but even for new equipment, we want to test everything out and make sure it really works. <laughs> uh, and that it's uh, uh, not, uh, uh, you know, as we used to say, DOA, dead on arrival, even if it's brand new from the factory. Uh, every now and then, you know, something bad can slip through. Uh, and so we, uh, we started doing that uh, with the radios that we had on hand. We, uh, we started testing the, um, the two that we're going to use for this actual sort of test build. Uh, and um, both of them seem to work correctly at their different power <clears throat> levels and power outputs and things. We, uh, as you'll see in a, in a little bit, we put them on a, uh, a simple little uh, meter and everything and did some testing on uh, they're low and in high settings, and it looks like they're, they're outputting correctly. Uh, and we had uh, audio on them, and of course the mics worked for right, for that for doing some testing. Uh, and uh, and then we were just labeling uh, the units. Uh, they're labeled on the bottom, but of course uh, once we put them in the uh, in the, uh, the the two up uh, bracket that we have for them, uh, it'll be hard to see see underneath them. So we went ahead and labeled them with a couple of just just labels there. Uh, and again, just started checking them out and making sure that they function, 
uh, and that the output is, is so good. Can label each um, and we'll do that for so all the SPX radios uh, for each one of these kits that we so end up building. Eight, uh, again, just to make sure, you know, in the IT world, uh, we talk about doing a pre-flight checklist in many cases, right, before you, uh, just like a pilot, right, before you put a piece of equipment into service, just check it out thoroughly, make sure everything's in good working order because it's it's far easier to deal with that before it's in service than, of course, after so it's, it's in it up, service. Uh, and so we were checking out uh, a couple of these radios, and we'll have to check all the radios that we have out. Now, the other thing we have to do for radios like this, we have to program them, and uh, it just so happens that our club president has the programming software and programming cable. And so yeah, we can program the radios so that they're going to be specifically on the ETA frequencies that we're going to use for this particular application. But we can also reprogram them so that uh, if we use them for some other application, uh, it's not hard. We can easily hook them back up and reprogram them. And so with the software, like, like almost any kind of software, Yes. You can save out different uh, profiles, different pre-configured settings, and so it's not going to be a big deal. You know, if we use these for three or four or five different kinds of, of activities, uh, and we're using some different frequencies for each one of those, we could easily just save out a version of the, uh, the software for that. Uh, so we were just kind of getting things ready for uh, testing, but also initially looking towards the, uh, the gravel rally and, and what we, we do with it uh, right now. You gotta take a guess on so here we're just out, taking a look at the, the big box, <laughs> the big box of cables, uh, programming cables and things, and I uh, had the specific one to program these radios and the, the software there on the uh, the laptop. Um, and it's not real difficult software to use, it's just, uh, you know, again, being sort of IT, it reminds me of some old school analog uh, digital phone systems I've worked on in the past. Uh, it's not real difficult to use, but there's there's kind of a surprising number of settings once you get into the software side of these things. Uh, you know, right through the, the front interfaces, there's kind of only so much you can do. But through the software, there's quite a bit more. Uh, and uh, once you get a kind of a profile set up, again, then you can uh, you could pretty easily uh, just jump in and change things like frequencies and stuff if you're doing a, a slightly different uh, you know project in the future. Uh, so we just spent a few minutes programming each one of the radios, the the UHF and the VHF uh, version, and got them ready to go. Uh, and then, as I said, and we'll see here in a moment, we also did some uh, some quick testing on the power outputs uh, because again being used equipment uh, we just wanted to make sure we didn't have a, a dead radio or radios putting out you know a, a far less power than they're supposed to you know just just things like that because you just you never know even with new equipment but especially with used equipment right you just never know what you may have so uh, fortunately uh, these first two radios tested out just fine right out of the box so uh, here we're just doing a little bit of that testing with a simple meter and they were outputting uh, pretty close to uh, to what they were supposed to do so we uh, it looked like we were going to be good to go as far as uh, as far as that would, would go uh, and that's just the kind of thing we need to do uh, when you're putting projects far easier to do it now than than on, on race day <laughs> discover that you've got a radio that's putting out you know one tenth of the power that it's supposed to or, or something like that uh, so we did uh, the testing on these and radios. In order to bring yeah, one of the other things with these radios, uh, yeah. like and a fair a, number a of radios on the market, and I, when I uh, is from there the are side, some solder pads. A little and you can see right it right here, there in the which circle. Tells me there's a I know gap it's a little, little bouncy, yeah, but um, it. It. you can see right in the circle that there's some solder pads that have to be soldered. It's a bridge there. and Can you see that from the factory that bridge is going to be totally open? And right, right, no solder at all. There's like a little. And so you have to complete that solder bridge. To, uh, to open things up for the programming a little bit. Uh, and that's uh, true on, on a number of different radios that, uh, that are out there. Uh, and so um, one of the radios we're using for this particular example was already had been soldered and one of them hadn't. Uh, and so uh, we actually went through, uh, uh, Mike in fact, Mike McRoberts, uh, actually went through and, uh, and just made that little solder connection on, uh, on one of them. But uh, as you saw, the one there already had had the bridge soldered. So for these particular radios uh, that we would use for this project, we'll have to check each one that we're going to use. Uh, you just pull the cover off, just four screws, and um, check that uh, position F on the, on the motherboard there. And so here we're just, uh, you know, doing some test finnings as we're uh, beginning to wrap up. Sort of part one of getting this uh, mobile crossband repeater put together. 
Uh, we'll probably be changing the battery type there and some other things. But we'll bring you folks along in the future segments here. This is Chris, KY4CKP for Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio 73.